Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today, we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his Passion and Resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Almighty and ever-living God, sanctify and bless these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach to the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and his disciples came to Jerusalem, he came to Bethany. Say to God of Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went to the hill where Jesus was sitting, brought to him the ass and the colt, and laid their colts before them. And he sat upon them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others had branches and trees strewn to them on the road. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face that did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him and one another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He, and he said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, this night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, 
though all have their faith in you shaken, mine, never, mine will never be. Amen, I say to you, this night, the very before the cock before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I have, even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little, fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one, arrest him. Immediately, he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of them who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servant to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us an oath before the living God whether you are Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. What I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robe and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapping him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, who was it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over and said, You two were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. 
As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. Do not know the man. A little later, a bystander came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he ran off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consolation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that even today it is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through the Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Jesus said to him, then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner who they, who they wished. And at the time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Jesus said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. But he said, why? What evil has he done? Then, then only one, they only shouted the louder, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but had a riot, but, but, but a riot was breaking out instead, he took water, washed his hands, and sighted the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look, look to it yourself. And the whole people replied, His blood be on us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to be crucified. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they had come to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he refused to drink. 
After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. When they sat down and kept watch over him, there and there they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their head and saying, you who, destroy, who, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and elders mocked him and said, he saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. The revolutionaries were crucified with him, also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. <clears throat> At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Which means... My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling Elijah. Immediately one ran to get a sponge, soaked it in wine, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly that they saw, when they saw the earthquake and all that had happened. And they said, truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. And among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn from in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposter would be worse than the first. But Pilate said to them, the guard is yours. Go, secure it the best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ.
Obviously, we have begun Holy Week, which is the, the holiest week of the church's year. And for all of us as, as Christian people, this is kind of the, the high point of our faith. And so this year, uh, it, it's rather weird that we're not here in the church together. Uh, we're together in spirit and in heart, virtually, um, but we're not here together physically. But we know that one day, again, that will come. Now, for me, uh, Palm Sunday is probably one of my favorite Masses of the year because I remember, as, a, as you know, I was a con, many of you know, I was a convert, and one of the first uh, full Masses that I ever attended as a young man was a Palm Sunday Mass many, many years ago in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City with Cardinal Terence Cook uh, as the celebrant. See, that tells you how, how old that I am. But it's, you know, there are, I'm not an overly emotional person um, overall in life, but uh, it is, I must admit, uh, it's very emotional and it brings tears to my eyes uh, to walk in through uh, an empty church to celebrate uh, these great days. But the reality is that that's what we've got and that's what we have to go with and it won't always be the case. The one thing that I have found about the, um, the virtual homilies or especially on Facebook and things is that people can comment. So uh, I would ask that we keep our comments nice, not mean, because everyone can read them. But here we are, we're beginning this, this holy, holy week in the church's calendar. But it's holy because we walk with Jesus. We walk with him through this today when his, he entered into Jerusalem. We walk with him to the Last Supper on Holy Thursday. We walk with him to the cross on Good Friday. And then we walk with him to the resurrection at Easter. And while we're not here physically together, we can all still walk together in spirit. And certainly, these are trying times. And so, as we heard in the Passion, even Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? We heard that in the responsorial psalm as well. And so it's easy in times like this to go to that, to that dark place. And I must admit a couple times I've gone there. I said, okay, Lord, what's going on here? You know, kind of like Martha and Mary. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died or this wouldn't have happened. But of course, that is not the case. The, the Lord has not abandoned us and he has not forsaken us. But things happen oftentimes in life that are not necessarily a part of God's plan, but God can help us get it through that. And one thing we always have to remember about faith is that faith is not like medicine. It's not like taking Advil or Aleve or something like that. If we have a headache, we take it, we get 12 hours of relief. You know, prayer and faith, if we say a prayer, you know, we're not automatically going to get 12 hours of relief. I mean, we may, but we may not. But the reality is, is that hardships and sufferings happen throughout history, and they happen throughout all of our lives to one degree or another. But certainly Jesus himself went through tremendous suffering, and that's what we commemorate this week. But we also can never lose hope because hope has arisen. And what that means is that through the tragedy that Jesus went through, tremendous suffering, passion, death, resurrection, ridicule, all those things, people doubting him, he overcame all that, and he rose at Easter. And that's what we will celebrate when this week is over. But in the meantime, know that all of you um, are in my thoughts and in my hearts and, and in my prayers. And I was thinking uh, this morning um, that, uh, you know, a couple of things, you know, obviously there's the things in life that, that bring us to tears, but then there's those scenes that we see sometimes in life that bring us to tears. And over the last year, I remember the, one of the first ones I saw that really kind of brought me to tears was watching um, the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris burning. That was very emotional, just seeing that beautiful church burn. And then this week, you know, Palm Sunday, empty church, bells ringing, no one's coming. It, it, it's emotional. But I know that you guys are all, we're all together in our hearts. So all of you are in my prayers. And in some ways, I offer this Mass more intently because I miss you so much. And you know, sometimes priests gripe and complain about, 
oh, you know, people getting up and going to the bathroom four times or messing with their phones or babies that scream and parents don't take them out or the tons of you that love to leave after communion. Well, I miss you guys so much. I would be thrilled to have a church filled with people twiddling around, messing on their phones, getting up and going to the bathroom and even leaving early, although I may change my mind on that one. But the reality is we, I do miss you greatly and I look forward to the day when we can all be together again. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, that we may strive to have the same mind as Christ as we offer our lives in loving service to one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of government and business, that through the example of Jesus, they may recognize how to be servant leaders and give priority to the needs of the most vulnerable, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to stop the spread of the coronavirus, and for all who are searching for a cure and developing a vaccine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those with the coronavirus, that God's healing spirit will ease their suffering, free them from the virus, and restore them to full health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving, that God will comfort them, Bring them supportive people to accompany them and fill their hearts with peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been furloughed or become unemployed, that God will quickly end the virus, open up new opportunities for them, and help them find the assistance they need to sustain themselves and their families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Billy Holman, and for all who are mourning them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silent prayer, let us now mention our own special intention. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear these prayers and those that we hold in our hearts. Continue to show us your mercy and your love and be with all of those who are working hard to find a cure and to help save lives. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation, to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabbath. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, and all those who are holding on to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our servants, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and for my divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements for those who haven't already clicked the button off. Uh, I would just especially like to give a big thank you to um, our mobile meals driver and our St. Lawrence uh, volunteers who continue to uh, deliver food uh, to people in need in these, in these difficult times. Also, I would just like to thank those who have uh, continued to send in your envelopes or made online donations. Um, I know every, a lot of people are struggling uh, out there, and I, if you can send one in, that's great, because unfortunately our bills keep going too, just like yours do. So we're kind of all in this together, but whatever help we can get, that would be great. Just a reminder that during Holy Week, we will live stream, continue to live stream daily Mass at noon on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Holy Thursday, Mass will be live streamed at 7 with the Blessed Sacrament exposed for adoration until 9, so kind of a virtual adoration. Um, and then Good Friday, service of the Veneration of the Cross will be live streamed at 3, 
the Easter Vigil, live streamed at 8 on Saturday, and Easter Sunday, live streamed at 10. You can do this through the parish website, Facebook, and YouTube. And we pray that, that it works. Um, if you are not getting um, parish email updates, please visit our website uh, to update that. And immediately after Mass, until 1 p.m., uh, blessed and disinfected palms uh, will be distributed after Mass in the school parking lot. Uh, we ask people to please stay in their vehicle. There should be someone out there kind of directing traffic. Last night we had kind of a traffic jam, so to speak. Um, and so just uh, kind of be patient as we get around to each car. Now let us pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Blessed Stanley Rother. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.